Hey guys, sup, 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 Ryu here for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council with The Next Meta. And today's video is about Monarchs. Are they staging a comeback, or are they still crap? No, they're not crap. <laughs> but the question is, are they staging a comeback to the, the meta tiers? That's what we're going to answer today. And the reason I want to answer that is because everyone talks about Quilla Tools, Quilla Hall, Quilla, Quilla Mbiff, um, however you want to, I, however you want to say that. Because I still have yet to work on the pronunciation for that, so for, just forgo the way I said it. <clears throat> so, let's talk about the matchup and why Monarchs have such a good matchup against it. They can easily drop Battle Fair. They don't care, they, they don't care about Specialing. They tribute. They'll tribute the freaking the Quillahoff Killer. And that'll be the end of that. <laughs> they, could, they could do it on the opponent's Battle Phase with a freaking Trap card. If there was a time to start picking up Monarchs, it may be now. It really may be. Caius, Ryza, um, Majesty's Fiend, Light and Darkness Dragon. These cards will easily just deal with Quillahawks and with Shadows and with Satella Knights because the deck doesn't care. It plays slow. Which is kind of funny because the other three play extremely fast setup. I'm not saying Monarchs don't set up fast. I'm just saying that they play a real slow paced game and you're forced to play at their pace. If the deck is built right, then it has great matchups. But at the same time, Monarchs are easily side against, so in comes the, but Ryu, it's easy to side against argument. And that argument's usually massive restricts or anything that's going to stop them. Well, I understand that. There's this great card called MST that people seem to forget about, Mag uh, the Catastrophe, which people seem to forget about, which helps take out the Quillahoff setup. And it's not going to take out the tool, but what you do is you chain it. You, when they attack, you play the trap card. Then you play construction uh, train signal red, which I talked about on Tech Tuesday a long while ago. I can always link it. And they, that card can't be destroyed by battle. It's going to be special. You're protected for the turn. You sit there and you sit on it. You destroy their pendulum zones. So when you kill the killer... They can't re, you know, do everything and spam in your face. You have to set up all over again. Now, this just may be a theory about that. I may be wrong, but then again, there's also Jack uh, Jack Frost, which could be thrown in Monarchs and splash down, and then everything in Monarchs can be searched, and the deck is just it doesn't have to be Frog. It could be Ghost. It could be whatever. Monarchs are such a great deck, and they always have been. And it's kind of been one of those things, my air conditioner just went out for a second. It's kind of been one of those things that have been around, but not really around. They kind of just stay in the back and wait for the right format. Kind of how, like, lights were a bit. Maybe this is Konami's ultimate plan, is basically to, you know, sit here and say, you know what, fuck it, we're going to bring back Monarchs, and we brought back lights we're going to bring back Monarchs, and let's bring back GBs afterwards. Now, the argument is that if it's a... You know, tier one deck like Monarchs would be hypothetically, or Lights when are now they're easy to side against to a certain extent. I'll give you that argument. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it's not. But as much as Lights when Dragon Ruler is easy to side against, it still tops. As much as Lights when Dragon Ruler is easy to top, uh, a Dragon Ruler, Mythic Dragon Ruler is easy to side against, it still tops. As much as this and that are easy to side against, they still top. Which brings me to the next part of this video, which is why it's titled Monarch Shadows, you know, Future Meta, instead of just the Monarch Comeback. The first part was Monarch Comeback. Let's talk about Shadows. Everyone says they're overhyped because, you know, they're easy. Everyone can figure out how to side against them. My cat just gave me a weird fucking look at me. Um, they're easy to side against. You know, they're easy to... We, we know what, to, what they're going to do. We know how to counter that. I'll give you that argument. Fine. Whatever. Here's the thing though, when said number of players play said deck, deck is said broken. They are heroes in a way, how heroes have the different attributes, so they do carry a lot of flexibility in the builds that they can have. Now, given that they may be predictable or easy, you know how to deal with them, good, good, very good, let the hate flow through you. The problem still is, is that they are a powerful deck, more powerful than everything we have right now, except for Lightsworn Dragon Ruler. They're pretty much, I, I think Lightsworn Dragon Ruler is on par with it, depending on setup. So, it comes down to that whole thing of, basically, you know, who's going to sack who harder. 
But this is something always to remember. Even if a deck is easy to side against, that's not going to stop it from being become tier 1. Becoming tier 1 has a lot of different things. Becoming tier 0 is a totally different fucking shit. Now, Krillahoff's as tier 0 is not going to happen. I don't care if it looks like it's going to happen. There are counters to everything. Even Krillahoff's. There are things that we don't see coming out that are still coming out. And honestly, I think Monarchs are the factor that will stop it from being tier 0. I think it's going to be zero, uh, like 0.5, but not full-on straight 0. Um, Dragon Rulers were 0.5, where Spellbooks did get a few tops in, but they couldn't control the game like everyone figured they would. And Dragon Rulers were the deck to beat. It's going to be that kind of case a scenario. It's going to be terrible. Like... For, for most people, it's going to be a terrible, 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 terrible format. I'm not going to bullshit and say it's going to be a great format. I think it's going to be awful. But this isn't a rant video. This is a discussion. And that's why you guys are part of it in the comments. Now, to me, it's going to come down mainly to four decks over the next few months. Shadows, Satella Knights, Monarchs, and the Quillhops. Now the reason I lead, I put in Monarchs and Satella Knights and not Lightsworn Dragon Ruler is because Lightsworn Dragon Ruler is easy to side against. They may get a few tops like Inferities do once in a while because the deck will be ready or whatever. Or to get a couple of Rogue because they figure out how to beat the deck and then their whole deck is main for you know made for that. But if it comes down to the situation that they run against something that is not you know uh, what they were planning to go against, it's going to screw up their whole strategy and that's going to be the end of that. And it's just that's what's pretty much going to happen there. Going back on subject, because I was getting a little bit off with my ramblings, I guess. Um, we know we don't know right now where things will fall in. You know, everything is just we're predicting this and that to top, and you know, there's there's nothing right now that's going to be set in stone because we're again we're a different format. Sorry about that. We're a different format than the OCG, so it's two separate worlds when it comes down to it. And we don't know what the hell to expect when it comes to this next format uh, after the Shadol format, which is going to be a minor Shadol format, which starts, I believe, next week. So, I still think Satella Knights are an unpredictable factor that you don't know how they're going to come into the TCG, how they're going to be built. They could go rogue completely. I think Ying Zing still have a chance. I'm going to be doing a top 10 countdown on the meta deck, so... You know, you'll find out a little bit more, but I'm looking more further into the future than that will. So it's one of those kind of scenarios where I'm just sitting here thinking, Krill Hawks are tier zero, right? But Monarchs get over it because they could drop Caius and Ryza, break the setups real freaking easy, and tribute their monsters off to control the game. And all they have to do is basically put out Light and Darkness Dragon and just control the board and just say, fuck your shit, you know, when you have no pendulums in the pendulum zone and we control the game. That's pretty, it's, it's going to be a wonderful duel to see. There's going to be wonderful duel videos uh, of those two decks, like, just going at it. That's going to be the shit, honestly. To me, that, that's the kind of shit I want to see. I want to see the two decks going neck and neck because it's going to be so damn skilled when it comes down to it. But the problem is, in that same thing that I could say it's skilled, Quillahoffs can easily just use Skill Drain, flip it up after Killer Summon. But from what I'm reading, most people were dropping Skill Drain in that sense because they want Killer to be the focus of the deck and they want Killer to come out quicker. I mean, but at the same thing, this is something most people have not thought about. It's easy as hell to print out Quillahoff Killer, correct? But there is a tech card that I will feature on Tech Tuesday this coming week if I remember that can easily be put in the deck and it's sort of like Majesty's Fiend away. And when I say that, I can say that with full on confidence that Destiny Hero Plasma can make an easy freaking card to go into Quillahoffs because it would counter the Monarch matchup. And that's something most people won't really see coming. And then it's like, whoa, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> I was expecting, you know, the, the killer to come out. You summon the killer, you summon the plasma, plasma comes out, plasma's gonna control your opponent's uh, monster effects. That is a surprise, surprise motherfucker factor that comes in your face and just goes, hey look what the fuck I just dropped, and now how are you gonna get over this? It's one of those things that you can easily take such an old card like Destiny Hero Plasma, which has not been meta relevant 
for such a long time and easily throw it into a deck like Quillahoff, which are pendulum based and summon freaking plasma. I did take notes and lessons when Simon was talking about pendulums. So that is a branch to that coffee time. And honestly, you don't know what else. You know, we could sit here and go, God cards, plasma. These are the reason pendulums will one day, if not now, starting with Quillahoff's. Excuse the way I'm saying it. Would Quillahoff's be, you know, the the game breaking factor of why these things work is because of tributes. So coming off this video, there are gonna be four to five decks in that meta, it's hard to say. Um, it's gonna come down mostly to the players. Krillhoffs are beatable. I will do a guide to your side on that pretty soon. And I just want to quickly say thank you for watching. Sorry about the lack of stock market. I'm going to be saying that all the way until Wednesday. Sorry about that because I had the stomach viral. I couldn't like focus on doing it. And I don't want to do a half-assed job. Had I spit one out today, it would have been a half-assed job. And I can't, I can't do that to you guys who basically make the council what it is. I, I just cannot do that. I am still working on the um, still working on the channel update video, the announcement video. So if that doesn't come out today, that will come out tomorrow, which is most likely what it's seen because it's like 3 o'clock when I film this and I'm just behind schedule and you'll have to forgive me. But again, thank you, thank you for each and every one of you. I'm actually um, wrapping up on some subscriber showcase. So you'll be seeing those again. I have a lot of them in front of me right now. So, thank you, again, thank you again for watching. If you enjoy the content and you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe for more so you can watch our daily videos that we post. And we post different content each and every day. We try to be different. We do post meta stuff. That's my turtle going nuts in the back. We do post some meta stuff once in a while. Uh, you know, there is meta, there is casual, and there is medium. Uh, just all across the board of Yu-Gi-Oh! on this channel. That's the premises of it. And we're going to be expanding even more when we drop the announcement video. You guys will see that. It's actually two announcement videos, not one. But there is one that's covering one thing and then the other one that's covering everything else. So, thank you guys for the continued support. I'm ready for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. I'll see you next video. Peace.